Hey, so today we are actually gonna talk about DaVinci Resolve and we are gonna build a node tree structure together which isn't destructive and you're also gonna be able to save them in a power grade and this node tree can also be customized and adapted to bigger projects and more complex grades. So it's a really good structure not only for beginners but also for advanced Great. Throughout the years I had a bunch of different node tree structures and I was always looking for the right node tree simply because I never felt confident in how my node tree was built. I mean was it right or was it destructive? So after some time of doing research and learning from senior colorists I figured out A. What suits me best in terms of efficiency and workflow overview and B. Having a sense-making non-destructive structure. So first of all, understanding nodes. Every node is basically an idea, so that's also your answer to a question you might have. Are complex node trees better than simple? And the answer is no and yes. You could have as many ideas as you want. So some people have more ideas, some have less, but also you're gonna add a node to not make your work destructive. I know a lot of people are doing the color space transform or the color management inside the node tree structure, but I personally like to do it if I'm not doing it in the project settings, I wanna do it in the timeline tab. And why? Because color space transform or color management is a task that can be done once. So I don't want to adjust it to every single clip. And also later, if I have to change it, I only have to adjust one globally and all my clips are going to be affected. For the sake of simplicity, we're not going to talk about color management, but only the node tree structure. Even though I would prefer to color manage beforehand and to have it more organized, to keep it efficient and to keep it clear when coming back later. I know a lot of you do this, like you have the structure and then you put in the color space transform at the end of the clip, but I like to do it in the timeline mode and I already organized it. Um, as you can see, this was shot on the Canon C200. So, Clip is only for each clip and timeline is for the whole timeline. I think that makes sense. So these adjustments are globally. You only have to do them once. And also looks are gonna be put in here, but beforehand. For example, film print LUTs, but it's important that the LUT expects the right color space. Yeah, so I already did uh, color management and now we are back to the clip. So how do, you, do we start? The first adjustment we're gonna do, my first idea would be adjusting the exposure. That's always gonna be my first note and we're gonna name it exposure. And why not balance the image before? Because it makes sense. Because if you don't have the right exposure, the colors will react and look different based on your exposure. So. I'm gonna go to my primaries. Yeah, I'm, I'm not gonna talk about grading today, but like how you set it up. So maybe I would add a bit of here, also a bit of gain and more lift. And the next one is gonna be ratio, the contrast ratio. You can name it contrast or ratio, whatever you want. But for the simplicity, I'm gonna name it contrast so that everybody's gonna know what that means. We can add a bit of contrast. Let's do some juicy 69. <laughs> Why not? Okay, and we can actually adjust the pivot to how it looks nice and gentle. So the next one is gonna be primaries or balance. In this note, you're gonna balance the colors to make everything neutral for 
a smooth bass. I'm always going to work with at least three notes and these are the three exposure, contrast and balance. Within the exposure I adjust my offset, my gain and my lift and sometimes I like to also add some gamma but normally I don't touch it. And the contrast, you can add some contrast. I like to do it with this one and the pivot to adjust it. And then the balance note, you can simply twist it within here, but I like to do it with the RGB values. So I'm gonna reset with double click. So we have this white shirt, so it's not that hard to adjust it. It's a little bit reddish and also a bit green. Ain't too bad. A quick balance. And after that we're actually gonna add another note and in this I adjust the temperature or the Kelvin, but I'm gonna leave it like that. These are called the primary adjustments because these are the first adjustments you would do to the image and also these affect the entire image. You may also have heard of secondary and I like to do them as a parallel note and for that we're gonna right click and add note and add parallel. Let's delete this for now. But we're gonna disconnect this arm by clicking on it and we connect it with the start, the green side. So why am I doing this in a second line or in a parallel note? Because I want my secondaries to work independently from each other, also to keep it non-destructive, obviously. So they get a fresh, clean feed and later they get mixed together in this parallel mixer. It's actually gonna be non-destructive and will save a lot of workflow issues if you have to change something back later. In here I would typically do HSL adjustments, use saturation and luminance, you can adjust these. For example, if I want to adjust the color of the light, I can do that within here. And power windows. Power windows are also gonna be used in here as they are secondaries. They are always beneath the primaries. Also this note where I'm shaping light. Let's just darken the outside of it. Maybe readjust exposure because I think it's... Yeah, maybe something like that. And then we have the power window and I also like to do the outside of it. They are actually connected to each other so if we add outside, add node at outside, it's gonna be connected if you move it around and if you go to this one you can adjust his face in this example. You can always go inside to add nodes if you'd like to. Let's just add another one for noise reduction. And yeah, a lot of people also do the noise reduction in front, but as I said, we want to keep everything non-destructive and noise reduction definitely is a destructive idea, note. And you might also ask yourself, why am I doing it within the secondaries? The noise that you will find in the image is typically in the darker part, so let's just do some noise reduction. So this feature of noise reduction isn't available in the free version, but in the studio version. We're gonna put it to better and maybe medium because it's pretty large. And then just add it. And so now it's gonna affect the entire image, but what I like to do with a noise reduction is use the luminance slider and let's just highlight mode. I am gonna trim the entire image until I get into the lower part. So now what's selected is the dark part and the luminance. So now the noise reduction is only gonna affect the shadow regions of my image. And you can also add a serial note if you need it stronger. Let's also just add some sharpening 
just a little bit and maybe not that far I mean it's pretty strong in the C200 I don't know what happened there so I would typically go in there copy my settings maybe. let's get it back to 77 copy command copy and paste it so now it's doubled actually you can adjust the second one but if you now toggle both you can see we made a pretty significant change what's good about this technique is it's only affecting the shadows where most of the noise is and not gonna unnecessarily wash out the entire image where it isn't that noisy so yeah but let's just disable those and also these two because now what we're gonna do let's now go into the gallery and save this as a node tree now if you actually want to save this as your node tree structure make sure to reset the adjustments within each node first you can simply add a power crate album and this is where we're gonna add it you just right click and then grab still so later you can apply this crate to another crate and the good thing about power crates is that each power crate is gonna be saved project wide on your database so you can use your power crates or in this case a node tree structure to every single project that you're creating but now let's go back to all the other clips and Let's actually call this skin. So now let's also enable our look, a look I created for this short film. So let's now go into Lightbox, now that we have disabled all of the secondaries as in adjustments that are gonna be needed to paste it on the other clips as a base. And now what we're gonna do is apply this node tree structure base to all of our clips and we already saved the node tree as the base so that you can reuse them on every project but now let's do it for the project let's go to the light box in the corner and actually click on our hero frame command copy and command all and then paste them in let's get back to our nodes and you can see the exposure is too bright because the other clip was too dark so let's adjust the exposure or you can also like reset the note for each thing that you were doing but it looks good so far that's how we adjust then the others because there are always gonna be some adjustments to do another example of secondary would be in this case let's reset this note and then go into highlight mode and select the blood also let's add a power window to only have the blood and not similar color in the frame so now we only have the blood selected and we can actually go into the gamma and pull some of the midtones back uh, maybe not too far with this tool without the secondary yeah and these noise reductions are gonna be enabled if I need some noise reduction but in this shot for example you can tell it's it's pretty good you you don't see too much noise so yeah that's actually it if you found it helpful please give me a thumbs up and share it with a friend. It really does help to get seen by more people. Also subscribe if you haven't already to not miss any other secret that I am about to share on this channel. And if you made it until the end, I appreciate you and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.